This is the One Piece spoiler that no one talks about. Because as wild and unpredictable as this story is, we've known for quite some time what's going to happen in the end game of the series, which is that Monkey D. Luffy is going to destroy Fishman Island. Allegedly, gotta add the allegedly, don't wanna be sued by fictional pirates. But this spoiler comes to us courtesy of Madame Charlie, a very curious existence in One Piece, an enigma that no one has quite solved. But like most characters in the series, Charlie was the child of a deadbeat dad who abandoned her, as well as her half-brother Arlong. You may have heard of him, he's the prick who did all of the bad things to Nami. But seemingly ever since she was born, Charlie has had this innate ability to see into the future with her crystal ball. The ball itself is also quite mysterious because we have no idea where Charlie got it, only that she was using it from at least the age of three onwards, which is strange, but not unheard of. There are some characters in One Piece who were just born different, like say Big Mom being birthed with her natural power or Issa being born with world-class observation hockey. But even then, Charlie is on a whole different scale of different. Also, this video is sponsored by the not boring web browser, Opera GX. Opera GX gives you the ability to be as original as your favorite anime character. For example, I currently have the Opera GX anime mod installed, which comes with a lovely wallpaper, custom background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tab sounds, themes and colors of the browser with complete control over the individual components of the mod available from the sidebar. That's all cool, but now here's the real cool part. You can visit the GX store, type in what Whatever, and download a mod of your choosing like this phenomenal Gear 5th Luffy. Although one thing I really love is the Opera add-ons. Through this, you can search for fantastic animated wallpapers like this lovely Sunny Go, or this one I really like of Gone From Hunter Hunter. But one of the most insanely helpful features is the video pop-out, which allows you to separate videos into an adjustable frame to keep up your viewing alongside your work or study. It's very simple, you just click the button on the left of the video and then bam, you've got yourself a companion screen. And with all of this freedom to move about, you're now free to do stuff like social media. The primary apps of which are already on the sidebar for easy access. Opera GX also has native generative AI accessible via the sidebar. And importing everything from your previous browser is quicker than any anime time skip. You just head off to browser settings, hit synchronization, import all of the things, and we're good to go. You can download and try Opera GX by going to operagx.gg slash review, which will instantly make your browsing experience much more fun. And thank you so much to Opera GX, as it's because of partners like them that we're able to do fun things like employ artists and editors in order to give you the best content possible as often as possible. So go do that thing, but for now it's back to you, me. Madam Charlie is introduced in chapter 610, which is named after her, and the cover page features Vivi engaging in quote, bride training, or at least that's what the flag being held by the Siamese cat is saying. And this was an art request by a name that you may be familiar with, a certain Akira Jean-Baptiste Tartori, also known as the sixth generation editor of One Piece and also, also known as the infamous quote, pervy, editor, so asking for an image of soaking wet Vivi on all fours and on all floors is very on point for him. And I'd highly recommend you check out my video about how Oda's editors shaped and changed One Piece, because Hattori himself is responsible for a pretty huge twist that I can't imagine One Piece without. Back to relevant things though, Charlie is the owner of the Mermaid Cafe, which would be quite a novelty for us, but on Fishman Island, I imagine it would be the equivalent of owning, say, the Human Cafe. In any case, Luffy goes on to visit this cafe, and as soon as he enters Charlie's private room. Luffy points at the crystal ball and he says, hey, big mermaid, what's this? And it's explained that Charlie is actually a famous fortune teller. However, Charlie states that she has given up on fortune telling as the future is usually best left unknown, which is, uh, it's quite narratively convenient, isn't it? Because otherwise she would have seen Hody Jones's revolution in advance and this arc would have no conflict, but also it's a bit of funky foreshadowing for a big mistake that Charlie is about to make in this very chapter. But look, predicting the future isn't a unique ability in One Piece. In fact, there are currently at least three people who can use Future Sight, being Shanks, Charlotte Katakuri, and even Monkey D. Luffy himself. The difference is that their abilities allow them to see a mere handful of seconds into the future. But when it comes to Madame Charlie, she can look at least one year into the future, which is a lot longer. Using this ability, Charlie at a mere three age units was able to predict the death of the monarch who preceded King Neptune. Charlie also predicted the beginning of the Great Age of Piracy a year in advance, and she was also able to predict the events of the Paramount War, including the death of Whitebeard. Now, last one is very important because Whitebeard was the emperor who had claimed Fishman Island and was therefore the person protecting it. And there's probably a good argument to be made that Fishman Island has only been allowed to prosper due to Charlie's influence, allowing them to metaphorically invest into all of the appropriate livestocks. But this is nowhere near an exhaustive list. And at one point, Kami even says that there are too many examples to list. Charlie just gets far, far too much right for any of us to be able to keep track. But the important 
important thing to know is that Charlie's predictions have never been wrong. Everything Charlie has stated would happen has happened. And that's very worrying because her final prediction is an apocalyptic level event. However, are these really predictions? Or is there another explanation for Charlie's abilities? Because another thing that happened when she was three years old was that the Sea Kings living in close proximity to Fishman Island began to get unusually violent and destructive. So Charlie looked into her crystal ball and stated that the Sea Kings were restless because they were waiting for the mermaid princess to be born. Which is interesting because that's not necessarily a prediction so much as a communication. It's like she asked them what the problem was and they said, this is the problem. Now this was taken as another classic Charlie prophecy, predicting the birth of Princess Shirahoshi long before Neptune had even met Otohime. However, Princess Shirahoshi wouldn't be born for another 10 years, which is very much on the extreme end of fortune telling, even for the insane abilities of Charlie. But I think this moment may actually be the key to understanding Charlie's abilities. So this is gonna sound crazy at first, but just go with me. Charlie may not be able to see into the future, but instead she may be able to communicate with someone or more accurately, something that can. When Goldie Rogers crew were descending to Fishman Island so that Odin could go and read the road poneglyph, they encountered an unexpected presence. Both Roger and Odin non-consensually eavesdropped on a conversation between Sea Kings where they stated, the birthing is at hand, our sovereign will soon be born, and another in a distant sea. The whales are delighted in anticipation of the day the two sovereigns shall meet again. We have waited for so long. It's almost here and surely all will go well this time. Just 10 until the birth and another 15 to grow. And what the Sea Kings are referring to here is the future meeting of Luffy and Shirahoshi, the mundane incarnations of Joy Boy and the void century princess wielder of Poseidon. Things went badly back then, hence why Joy Boy had to write his apology poneglyph. That's what they had to do back in the days before YouTube. You couldn't make an apology video. You had to write out an entire apology cube. And that's why the Sea Kings are saying, surely all will go well this time. And I mean, we'll see about that in a bit because again, there's a worrying prediction. But Roger took this as a sign that his son would be born in the distant sea. And after finding Laugh Tail, immediately disbanded his crew in order to set out and knock up the first willing womb he found. And that that also did not go well. But here's my personal thoughts on this. It's just not very one PC to have unexplained powers like Charlie's fortune telling. If anything weird or seemingly magical happens in this world, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be explained by devil fruits, hockey, or otherwise fictional science. Magic is not a thing in One Piece. And one great way to explain what's happening with Charlie is the idea that she also has the ability to hear the voice of all things and can use it selectively by channeling the power through her crystal ball, essentially meaning that these predictions are not hers. What Charlie could be unknowingly doing is tapping into the conversations of the Sea Kings, who for whatever reason just cannot seem to shut up about the future. To be fair to them, I imagine that the life of a Sea King isn't all that exciting and they do need something to talk about just to pass the time. However, the big difference here is that Charlie doesn't just hear the future. She seems to visually envision it through her crystal ball, which is a phenomena that I cannot cleanly explain with this theory. The only way I could make sense of it is by suggesting something a little bit messy. Like say using the voice of all things in conjunction with natural future sight, which would allow Charlie to conjure images of whatever the creatures were talking about. Although there is another thing that gives me a lot of pause for thought, which is that sometimes Charlie's predictions are oddly specific and on quite a small scale. The ones that most people remember, like the start of the Great Age of Piracy or the death of Whitebeard, are all of these epic world-changing events. But Charlie can also predict much more mundane local stuff as well. In fact, early on during one round of predictions, King Neptune's guard says, she, being Charlie, was right about the seductive, I mean seditious mermaid Otohime and her political protest the other day, which is a funny line in retrospect, because you have this merman essentially thirsting over Neptune's future wife. But apparently Charlie was able to see that Otohime was going to hold a protest. Great. Which if her ability was connected to the Sea Kings would be an oddly mundane thing for them to be discussing. I feel like these ancient creatures have much greater long-term concerns for the world than local fishermen politics, but then again, maybe not. They know enough about Shirahoshi to suggest that they may know who her mother is as well and might be keeping an eye on her. Of course, even if this is the explanation for Charlie's powers, all it really does is kick the explanation can down the road because we would then need to ask how the Sea Kings can know about and or predict the future. And it doesn't help with our current predicament either because regardless of whether it's Charlie, the Sea Kings or both, we still have to deal with the set in stone future destruction of Fishman Island, which was predicted at the end of chapter 610 when a distraught Charlie yells at anyone willing to listen. She says that she did not intend to look, but Charlie sensed something calamitous within Luffy. Find him, find the pirate with the straw hat. 
Drive him off the island right now. I wish this prophecy would not come true, but the human with the straw hat, straw hat Luffy, he will bring ruin to Fishman Island. And here's the, the sinister thing. As a fan base, we often act like this is some event that's going to happen far, far into the future, which is due to how One Piece is published. It feels so far away to us. In fact, just to display that point, chapter 610 was published in 2011. So we're looking at almost 13 years ago. But when Charlie is asked by the children when Luffy is going to destroy Fishman, Island, all she can answer is that it'll be somewhere between tomorrow and a year from now. And it's scary to think about how much time has passed in world between then and now, because it means that Fishman Island is going to be destroyed imminently. So crazily enough, we got off to a very quick start post time skip with Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, and Dress Rosa all wrapping up in less than a week. Mate, what a productive week. But things extended from there, and now we're somewhere around four to five months into the New World era. And that might not sound like much, but that means that our ticking time bomb Fishman Island is at least a third of the way counted down. And a third of their time being up is the best case scenario because the longest they have to survive is a year. It could be much less than that. And with that in mind, it's kind of shocking that they aren't evacuating the island as we speak. I'm not entirely sure where they'd go, but according to Charlie, this devastation could happen tomorrow. Although in some cases, I suppose it's oddly comforting knowing the future. Like when Hody Jones launched his revolution, Charlie was completely calm. She even said straight to his face that the man who destroys Fishman Island would be Luffy, not you, Hody. So all she had to do was sit there and wait for Hody's plan to inevitably fail, which both she did and it did. And you know what? Even Prince Fukuboshi took this news surprisingly lightly. He said, Madam Charlie, your ability to foresee the future is well known even at our castle. This is very troubling. The future is an uncertain thing, but I can't let them run loose. We must take precautions with them, which I think given Charlie's track record is a very understated reaction. But something we shouldn't ignore about Charlie is that her character forms part of a very important theme of Fishman Island, which is to judge things with your own evidence rather than making up your mind based on past prejudices and think that you weren't necessarily involved in. And whilst this is generally tackled from a perspective of human fishman racism tensions, there are definitely other varieties of prejudice to overcome. And Charlie's personal journey is to stop making judgments about people's intentions based on what she sees in the magic ball. And so during the fight at Gyeongkod Plaza, Charlie makes a heavily underrated One Piece speech. Look on with your own eyes. Watch what is happening in the square, above the sky. It's the humans that are fighting those pirates from the fishman district. You must witness what is about about to happen with clear, honest eyes, free from preconception. And ultimately, Charlie does commit to this new belief by smashing her crystal ball and apologizing to Kami for ever suspecting her friends and even decides to put her full trust into Luffy. Now in the manga, this is also quite an interesting point because when Charlie predicts the destruction of Fishman Island, all she sees is a silhouetted figure in a straw hat. For all she knows, this isn't even Luffy and Charlie may have been accusing the wrong person. However, in the anime adaptation, they make it pretty clear that yes, this is Luffy, there's no fun artistic silhouette here, just a flat face shot in the flames. And for some reason they make him look so, so much more evil than he's ever seemed before or since. So I, I don't know what to think myself. These days, the anime usually works in very close collaboration with Oda. However, that wasn't always the case. And even in the modern toy anime, they do take liberties that are sometimes later contradicted by the manga. So for now, it should just be noted that within the canon of the manga, it is not 100% guaranteed that this is Luffy, although it is highly likely. And even at the conclusion, of Fishman Island, Kami feels quite conflicted about this because the elephant in the room that everyone's choosing to ignore for now is that Charlie's predictions have never been wrong. And I think that what most characters are trying to take from these events is that the future isn't set in stone and can be changed, which would be the message behind most traditional shonen series using this sort of narrative device. And even within One Piece itself, the whole idea of future sight via Haki is to see a vision so that you can change the outcome of the future. But with Charlie, I don't think this is the case. I personally believe that this is Luffy, but we're seeing the situation out of context. Luffy will destroy Fishman Island, but is that necessarily a bad thing? The vast majority of mermaids and fishmen want to follow Otohime's dream and migrate to the surface anyway. They want to start a new civilization living under the direct sunlight, rather than what the sunlight treaty funnels down to the seafloor. And this is a very convenient dream because whether they wanted to leave or not, they're gonna have to. Because the fact of the matter is that Fishman Island is located in a very precarious spot, directly under the red line, 
design, not on the sea floor in front of it, but in a strategically carved hole under it. And this is important because the leading ideas for the conclusion of One Piece almost all point to the destruction of the Red Line. To remove the one thing separating and trapping the various areas of the world, thus creating the largest level of freedom possible, and turning the world itself from separate pieces into one piece. And during the Void Century, a series of weapons were made in the case of Bluton, or sourced conveniently in the case of Poseidon, or something else, and in the case of Uranus, which we still don't know. But the strange thing is that these weapons of mass destruction were gathered on the side of our theoretical protagonists. They were under the control of the Ancient Kingdom, and I believe they were made because the original Joy Boy's plan was to use them to destroy the Red Line. Hence why the Noah was also built during the Void Century. To not only ensure their safety, but to keep a promise to the mermaid princess Poseidon and transport all of the fishermen and mermaids away to live on the surface. However, for reasons, reasons that we do not yet know, Joy Boy failed. The world government won the conflict and we had to move to plan B, which was to hide the ancient weapons for almost a thousand years waiting for the next Joy Boy, as well as the next mermaid princess, both of which we have now, and Luffy will now inherit the obligation to do what Joy Boy could not. Hence why Luffy will destroy Fishman Island, but maybe not so actively. Charlie's original words in the manga were that Luffy would quote, bring ruin to the island. She and everyone else later go on to talk about Luffy as if he'll be the one to burn it all down himself, but it feels more like he could be a catalyst. For example, in a situation where the world government gained control of an ancient weapon or ancient weapons, plural, they get them, they're like, haha, then they take aim at Luffy, who they don't like, and is currently on Fishman Island for some reasons, and then that's what brings ruin to it. Or it could even be slightly more abstract than that. Say if the world government discovered that Fishman Island has some sort of allegiance to Luffy, then they decide to make a preemptive strike without him even needing to be there. However, Ruin is still brought to the island via its association with Luffy. Whatever the case, in the end, this event is unavoidable. And to be the first to know when this destruction occurs, make sure to subscribe to this channel for consistent injections of One Piece culture delivered straight into your YouTube feeds.